Hello, it's Mr. Andy here at the Traverse Area District Library, and we're here on Thursday for Virtual Maker Fest. I'm excited to announce that today's special exhibitor guest is the Grass River Natural Area. Um, so let's hop to it. Um, I've got a few little slides we're going to share and um, get, get things started, and then we'll pass it over to Grass River to talk about um, super seed spreaders. So there we are, this week's virtual MakerFest. Um, MakerFest is courtesy of the Steam Maker Alliance for Northwest Michigan. And um, these are organizations who are creating STEAM and making opportunities for families throughout our region. So, so excited to um, have them along to help support uh, STEAM and making and MakerFest here in um, Northwest Lower Michigan. If you don't know what STEAM is, that is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So our friends from Challenge Island, Northwest Michigan, Girl Scouts Michigan Shore to Shore, the Grand Traverse Area Children's Garden, the Great Lakes Children's Museum, Inland Seas Education Association, our network of homeschooling families, Newton's Road, Old Town Playhouse, Tattle Youth Services, um, and so many more um, are part of this, uh, this group. And we are happy and excited to welcome this week's featured exhibitor, which is the Grass River Natural Area. And Emily Burke, their conservation and education specialist is here to join us. You may be able to see in that logo there, uh, they have a nice, uh, a lot of great otters and there's a fun otter video on their their homepage if you go to grassriver.org that's g r a s s r i v e r.org um emily's going to talk today about super seed spreaders and she even dropped off some kits at the main library here at Tattle um, for anyone to pick up and practice some super seed spreading of your own but I'm going to let her uh, take it away and um, talk about Grass River and seed spreading. So here we go. This is Emily. Hey, everybody. My name is Emily Burke. I am from Grass River Natural Area, which is um, an almost 1,500 acre preserve uh, out in Antrim County near Bel Air. If you've ever been out that way, it's about 45 minutes from Traverse City. Uh, and I am the conservation and education specialist out there. So that means that I get to um, study nature and the plants and animals that live on the preserve and make sure that everything stays healthy. Um, but I also get to teach people about nature. So I'm excited to do that today. Um, and Grass River is really excited to be part of the Maker Fest. Um, we love interacting with kids and um, making stuff. So today we are going to be making a seed dispersal contraption. So seed dispersal is something that all plants do and all it means is um, it's how the plants spread their seeds. And there are two main reasons why plants, why spreading seeds is really important for plants. Plants don't want to just drop their seeds right below um, them. They want the seeds to get spread far away from the parents. And that's because one, that decreases um, any competition that the parent plant might have with um, the baby plants. If they were growing right below or right nearby the parent plant, there might be, uh, they might have to fight over uh, water that was in the soil or nutrients that, was, that were in the soil or even sunlight. The baby plants probably wouldn't live very long because the big parent plant would sort of be shading them out but plants need sunlight in order to grow and make their food. 
So competition is one reason why plants spread their seed. The other is reducing disease. So if there are a bunch of plants all packed together in a really small space, that is just like perfect conditions for a big plant disease outbreak to happen. So it's, um, it's beneficial or it's good for plants to spread themselves out so that disease isn't spread from one plant to the other as easily. Kind of like how we have to stay six feet apart from each other right now in order to stop the spread of COVID-19. It's exactly like that. So plants spread their seeds or disperse their seeds for, in order to reduce competition and then in order to reduce the possibility of a disease outbreak. So before we go any further and look at what is included in our kits and how we're going to make these seed dispersal contraptions, um, I wanted to show you guys a part of a video that I created last fall um, that, that will show you guys some of the ways that plants in Northern Michigan um, disperse their seeds. Uh, so we'll look at um, plants that disperse their seeds um, using the wind, using animals, and using um, what's called ballistics. Some plants actually, like the seeds literally like explode and are shot out mm -hmm. of the plant seed pods. Okay, so let's take a look at that and then we'll get back to what we're doing today for our activity. All right, so let's talk about wind dispersed seeds first. So here we have a burst pod of common milkweed and these seeds have, are attached to nice fluffy parachutes. Um, and these seeds are really light and very small. And that makes sense because if they're being traveled on the wind, you wouldn't want to be really heavy, you wouldn't go very far. Um, but because they're really small and light, that means that the endosperm, which is the part of the seed that actually um, contains the nutrients for the growing plant that surrounds the embryo, the little baby plant, um, the, the endosperm is very small. So they have very limited nutrients that they carry with them. Um, so to make up for that, the plant produces tons of seeds um, with the hopes, you know, that since it doesn't have a very good chance of making it, um, becoming established um, to make up for the, the low chance per um, seed. And also they have a low chance because they're just being spread by the wind, right? Um, there's no guarantee where it will land, if that site will even be any, in any way conducive to um, germination. You know, it could land in a lake or something. Um, so yeah, to make up for that, the plant produces tons of seeds. Um, and other plants that do this, obviously they're really familiar, um, dandelion, um, which it sees can travel up to 500 miles, by the way, over 500 miles, which is amazing. Um, but also asters, thistles. Um, and then this group of plants not only includes these parachute type guys, but also um, plants with winged seeds. So like maples, um, which have their winged helicopters, but I like the technical term is Samara, but I like the term helicopter better. Um, and also ash trees and basswoods have winged seeds. Um, and the purpose of those wings is just to um, slow the plant's descent to the ground so that it can hopefully be blown, ab blown about by the wind and travel some distance. And they, they can, maple seeds can travel up to 180 meters away from the parent plant. So that's not too shabby. That's almost two football field lengths. Um, yeah, so that is wind dispersed seeds. All right, so now let's talk about seeds that are dispersed by animals. So I think the best way to put, best place to start with that is by talking about fruit. Because fruit, like wild blueberries or something, did not evolve in order to satisfy our taste buds. I know, crazy. Um, but instead, it evolved in order to assist the plant in dispersing its seeds, because obviously fruit is attractive to animals. Um, and if the seeds are encased in the fruit and the animal eats the fruit, 
and then it travels a ways with the seeds in its gut, assuming the seeds don't get destroyed by the digestive enzymes and acids. Um, then the seed gets the seeds can get pooped out at a different place um, that could be very far away from the parent plant. And the best part is that the seeds are then deposited in a pile of perfect fertilizer for germination. So it's actually really cool. The animals get um, a meal in the, in the fruit and then the plant gets a great seed dispersal. So it's a great example of a mutualism. Um, so we're looking at um, rose hips right now of the swamp rose, um, but lots of fruit is starting to ripen right now. These guys, um, fruit of things like false Solomon seal, um, lots of dogwood berries are ripening, um, and jack in the pulpits too, which are gorgeous. And um, animals that will eat these are like fruit eating birds, like wax wings um, or certain thrushes. Um, but also things like deer and bears and turkeys too, for sure, grouse, that sort of thing. Um, so lots of animals rely on these. And I should say that fruit is not the only way that seeds, that plants um, entice animals to carry the seeds around. Um, nuts are another way. Um, and nuts work by basically they're the actual seed. Um, and so a lot of times squirrels will take the nuts and go and cache them or bury them um, someplace. And oftentimes they forget about them or, you know, a certain percentage of the ones that they cache for the winter. And then the seeds are already buried, um, which is great for the for the plants. Um, great um, chance of germination um, with that. Then some other ways that animals disperse seeds um, are, as anybody knows, who's been hiking and gotten burrs stuck all over to their pants. Um, Seeds that have hooks or burrs are great for being able to hook onto animal fur or even our pants or shoes and be dispersed that way where they fall off later. So so plants definitely take advantage of animals moving around in the environment um, in order to disperse their seeds. A oh, one more neat way that animals disperse seeds that you might not know about is um, some seeds, especially spring wildflowers like bloodroot, trilliums, violets, have what's called an eliosome attached to their seed, which is just like a little fatty tidbit. Um, and ants love them and ants take the seeds and that's what the eliosomes have evolved. You know, that's why they evolved is for in, in co-evolution with ants so that ants take the seeds back to their little nest or burrow. Um, they take them underground, they store them in their food storage chamber. Um, and then they eat the little eliosome, but then they just leave the seed, um, which is now underground, perfect germination site. Um, so that's a really neat um, mutualism too. All right, so now on to the fun part, ballistics. Okay, so this is a jewelweed plant and I talked about this maybe last week or the week before in my late sum wetland um, summer wildflowers um, class, but I want to do it again because I didn't really talk about how the seed dispersal method works. So we've got these nice pods um, that the seeds develop in. And when the seeds are fully developed, like this pod looks like it's almost about to pop, um, the pod splits and the seed has spring mechanisms inside it that literally spray the seeds um, up to 10 feet away from the plant. Um, so the plant's other common name is touch me not. Um, and it's for this reason, because the plant can explode. Um, literally the pods explode if they're ready, um, if you just brush up against it. So let's try this one. Oh, that one wasn't quite ready. Didn't really give a great explosion. Maybe this one down here will be better. But these don't look like they're quite ready yet. Yeah, that one's not quite ready. Um, but you can start to see the little spring mechanism in there. Um, yeah, so this wasn't the greatest example of those ballistics. Um, but a plant that does this, um, Another plant that does this that we have around here is witch hazel. Um, it's a shrub and those seeds will um, be ready to pop out of their capsules um, come mid-October. Okay, so I hope you thought that that was as neat as I think plant seed dispersal is. And I hope you were paying attention and maybe got some ideas 
for how you can design your own plant this seed dispersal contraption. And I should mention that that was really just the tip of the iceberg, you guys. There are so many ways that plants um, have evolved to spread their seeds. Um, so many that we didn't even get a chance to talk about. So you can be really creative with this. You can come up with any way that plants just can disperse their seeds. Um, one other way that you know I, I, I could mention would be how coconuts disperse their seeds um, on the ocean. Coconuts are, you know, the fruit and the seeds of the plant is inside of there and they're so big and lightweight that they float on top of the water, right? And they are spread from mm -hmm. island to island um, by the water and the waves. So that's just one example of how, you know, how many different ways there are. So let's take a look at our kit and talk about exactly what we're going to be doing today. So we should have gotten a kit that looks something like this in a plastic bag. Uh, if you didn't get a kit, don't worry. You can totally do this activity without a kit, just using stuff around your house. Um, and the activity uh, description page uh, will be on the website, so you can just download it from there. Uh, you don't have to have a paper copy. Uh, but if you did get a kit, first thing you should pull out is this instruction sheet says super seed spreaders and it talks about uh you know the way what we talked about in the video with how plants disperse their seeds uh, but then it gives you your mission at the bottom it says here's your mission using the materials in the kit or from around your house along with what you learned in the video design ways to get all three of your seeds across the room so you're going to Find a spot on one side of a room in your house, and your mission is to get all three of the seeds that come in your kit across to the other side of the room. But there are two rules. You can't move from your spot, first of all, because remember, you're a plant. You don't have legs, right? Plants can't move. Second rule is that you can't just throw your seeds across the room because again, you're a plant and you don't have arms. Plants can't throw. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we'll take out from our kit is our very important seed packet. So these are the three seeds that you need to get across the room. The first one is a big seed, it's an acorn. Then we've got a medium sized seed, this sunflower seed. And then I don't even know if you guys can see this because it's so small. We have a teeny tiny little celery seed. And because these three seeds are different sizes and different weights, you might have to come up with three different ways to get the seeds across the room, one for each seed. I don't know, it's up to you. So what else do we have in our kit? Okay, we have, oh, what's this? Weird sort of stretchy mesh fabric. I don't know what you guys could do with that. Got some string. You need to tie something together on your contraptions. We have plastic Easter egg that opens up. Could be like a little chamber for your seeds. We have a cotton ball. I don't know if you want to fluff this out and use the fluff, or maybe it could be like a soft landing pad or something, whatever you want. We have a little drink umbrella uh, in case, you know, this could be used like the umbrellas in the milkweed uh, seeds or the dandelion seeds. It could float the seed across the room, or it could be used for something else. I don't even know. Um, we have a couple rubber bands. We have a few like paper sticks. We have some Q-tips, hmm, intriguing. Um, safety pins, if you need to like attach things to each other. And then we have some Velcro strips and these just peel right off this plastic backing and you can stick them to things and then Maybe they could represent, you know, like sort of uh, 
like those burrs that are on some seeds that get like stuck to animal fur. I don't know. Mm -hmm. and then we have these little weird sticky dots. So these <laughs> are little um, dots that you can peel back the plastic and they work kind of like putty. They can stick things together. And then lastly, we have a trail map to Grass River. Uh, I put this in there. It doesn't really relate to our activity today, but in case you guys ever want to visit Grass River, you have a map of all of our trails so you don't get lost. Okay, so that's your mission today. Get those three seeds across the room. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with, uh, what, what you make to design uh, to get these seeds across the room. Um, and don't forget that if you do this activity, uh, you know, we would love to see what you create. So you can uh, take a photo of your project and you can email it to, where is that email? I have it somewhere. Okay, you can send your, your um, photo to the email address kids at tadl.org. Okay. Good luck, everybody. Bye. All right. How fun was that? My goodness. I think there's going to be a lot of great activity and a lot of imagination uh, in getting these seeds across the room. How, how are you going to do it? You have lots of, lots of opportunities and lots of um, great tools to invent a way to get these seeds. And remember, you're a plant, you're not a human when you're designing this. So you gotta be creative, you can't throw it, you know? So can't wait to see that. And Emily's right, uh, if you send your, um, you send your pictures of your completed activity to kids, K-I-D-S at tattle.org, um, I'll pass them on to Emily, and we'll also enter you into our uh, STEM kit um, challenge. And so you, you may earn some STEM kits as well. Let me uh, get us back to our main screen here. Hey, everybody. It always happens that I... Oh. And now I want to share my screen again so you can see uh, see what's happening. So thanks again to Emily and the Grass River Natural Area for thinking up this great um, activity. And the video was awesome too. Hey everybody, my name is Emily Burke. I there we go. Okay, so again, you can earn a STEAM prize pack if you send a picture of your completed uh, seed, super seed spreader activity or seed dispersal activity. Um, our STEAM prize packs are donated from Seeds Energy and Education Centers. They're, they have great after school programs um, and they've been sending home these great STEAM prize packs to their their families that participate in the program. Um, so they come filled to the brim with, you know, 10 or, or more different activities um, that you can that easily last two months, not even one month, two months, I would imagine. So all you need to do is take a photo of your work, send it along with two to three sentences about what you learned to kids at title.org. And we'll send your adult a, a survey to complete. Um, and you're qualified to win one of those. So upcoming April Virtual Maker Fest activities. Next Monday, this coming Monday, the 19th, we are uh, welcoming Challenge Island Northwest Michigan. Um, can't wait to see what Renee has for us. She always thinks of fun stuff. Um, but while you're waiting, you can stop by Tattle's main library on Woodmere here in Traverse City, and you can pick up um, a sprout growing kit or a confetti bowl kit. 
or the super seed spreader or all three. You can have your own little maker fest this weekend um, with all three activities. Just stop by Tattles uh, Main Library in the Youth Services Department and ask for the virtual maker fest kits. Um, for more information on any of these, visit tattle.org slash events or find us on Facebook at Tattle Kids. That's at T-A-D-L-K-I-D-S. All right. Well, thank you all for attending um, yet another outstanding virtual maker fest. Um, the STEAM prize pack winners will be contacted after the monthly showcase on the final Saturday of the month. So that's not this Saturday, but next Saturday, the 24th. So I hope you all can join us then. If you want to watch more MakerFest videos, virtual MakerFest videos, please visit uh, us at facebook.com slash tattlekids. Click on our videos, or you can scroll down the page and find the virtual MakerFest playlist. Um, and you can also stop by our um, page on YouTube, our channel on YouTube. It's Tattle, not just books, and look for that playlist there as well. So, so happy everyone could join us here today. I'm Mr. Andy from the Traverse Area District Library. Thank you for joining us um, for Virtual Maker Fest. Thank you to Grass River Nat Natural Area for um, the video and the activity. And we can't wait to see you here in the library. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.